Hi everyone, it's Simon Keeling here at weatherweb.net. This is your look ahead updated on Monday the 11th of May. Thanks again for watching. Right, um, I'm going to have a bit of a, a, a ramble, so you'll have to bear with me on this one. Um, the You've probably got the impression over the last sort of few weeks actually that the long range has been really difficult to try and pin down. We've been jumping all over the place. I've been saying consistently that I thought high pressure would be building as we got into the middle stages of the month, uh, into the middle part of May, and that the second half of the month would be far more settled than the first part of the month. So, um, But that's not what we're seeing for the majority of the long-range models. Look, this is the GFS, and I'm just going to run through this. You get this at weatherweb.net, and then down the left-hand side here, you've got the GFS operation. If we click on ATL 500, that's what we're looking at now. So this is the uh, 500 millibar forecast, and look, strong jet stream still blowing kind of through here at the moment and almost we've got another branch of the jet that kind of gets up here and then another branch of the jet down here into the eastern part of the Mediterranean. Now as I run this sequence through um, just watch what happens. There we are on Thursday that's the area of low pressure getting cut off on Thursday look and zipping its way eastwards there's a little cut off feature sliced off from the main trough that's moving eastwards and then towards the end of the week look that feature then disappears down to Italy whenever you see that going on it's going to stay there for a wee while bringing unsettled conditions across Italy and much of the central Mediterranean pretty late for those unsettled conditions as well 16th of May and it's still doing that then we've got the jet blowing through the UK look into Saturday got a ridge out here uh, in the Atlantic there, getting fed by this southwesterly flow here. But it's not as straightforward as that, because then we find that trough look out towards the uh, west, so south, or sorry, I should say it's east of Newfoundland here. So it's stuck in here, look, pumping these heights up here. It, the ridge gets squeezed back because this air here is so cold coming off uh, Greenland, and it just maintains this cold pull up towards the north of uh, Scotland and secondary cold pool here look down into the uh, southeastern parts of uh, Italy and then as we go through the sequence for next week well what do you know much the same look apart from the trough through the UK is getting ever stronger and ever more marked look there it is there we go with the trough through the UK keeps things unsettled what's happened to our high in the middle part of the month well do you know what it just ain't there and look even going through into the 24th and up into the 25th of May we get exactly the same situation. We've got this northwesterly flow pumping and feeding this cold air down through the western parts of the UK, maintaining the trough here, look, in the Atlantic. Now, uh, of course, that goes completely against what we've been saying about high pressure building in the second half of May. But you know what? I don't believe it. I'm not sure that's the pattern that's going to evolve here. This feels very similar to last summer. Um, in trying to get a handle on the long ranges, frankly, I think we're better off going back into the into the analogs almost to see what was going on uh, in previous years when we've had years similar to this. And this is a chart that I've I've shown you before, uh, which was the uh, analog chart of all the moderate El Nino event years for 2009, 2002, 1994, 1961, 1968, 1963. Um, for the uh, months of May through to July. And doesn't make particularly great reading because it too, look, keeps lower than normal heights through the UK, higher than normal heights down towards the south of the country. That goes, actually backs up that. So it backs up that idea. Uh, but it goes against what the longer ranges are saying because this is the CFS. So this is the CFS forecast for week one total rainfall going up to the 17th of may check out the forecast for week two up to the 24th of may look and you start to see here look higher pressure getting in from the southwest which is kind of what we've been predicting so in that week 17th to 24th things settling down high pressure look building northwards and uh, rain affecting parts of northern scotland um, and then into the end of May, well, there we are, look, high over the top of us, dry conditions for many. Beginning of June, well, what do you know? Similar conditions, look, 
high pressure over the top, generally dry. The high gets squeezed away into the middle part of June, up towards the north. We get some thunderous showers forming in towards the south, and it's thunderous showers across central parts of Europe. That all makes absolute logical sense. I myself a problem because I don't believe that, as I just said to you, it all looks just far too unsettled. And if you look at the forecast uh, pressure, for the same period, look, we just run through here, excuse the clicking, it's the, the mouse here, but as we just run through, look, there's Friday, uh, show it signs of high pressure building, come on, high building, it's about the right time, middle of the month, oh, no, it's gone, look, there's low pressure coming down to the North Sea, blooming cold, I'm fed up with it being so cold, but blooming cold conditions coming down through Friday, uh, on that chart and uh, this is the following Friday of course into the following weekend and look low pressure still there being fed by the jet you see it out here to the west of the country and uh, so we just stay with low pressure and with those unsettled conditions but I guess what's interesting is look there's high pressure here 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 and here so it kind of sees oh and another one there just thrown in for good measure so it kind of sees the idea of, of high pressure thrown around the, the the model so what on earth's going on here because you see it just keeps on pulling me back to that idea with the with the cfs but and we've seen this before where the uh, analogs are you know really do give you an insight and that's what they do they give you that for um summer and what's interesting is they then give you that for autumn. So they show high pressure exactly where you would actually expect to see it up towards the north of the country here. This is August through October and uh, a northeasterly flow generally dry across the country. Uh, trough out in the Atlantic, trough here look across the eastern parts of Europe. That's what that shows if you follow that logic and the analogues through uh, autumn and that's the one for summer. And as I say it's uh, it's baffling me because that goes with a with a much wetter summer than we're seeing from the long ranges and it kind of pulls me back towards these analogues and says right okay time to throw the long ranges out the window but what on earth is going on i think this is the key it's el nino and i think what's happening is let me just get the right chart for you okay this is the animation uh of el nino this is temperatures centered from uh, starting off in February and bringing us all the way up to date and just to get you orientated look here's the uh, here's, here's Mexico in here and it's this area in here that would be particularly interesting watch the temperatures warm up um, there they go look see you've got warmer temperatures kicking off you've got El Nino kicking off long ranges I think are having a bit of a problem trying to deal with this El Nino event and uh, if we look at the actual anomalies these are the actual anomalies and it's this region here it's region 3.4 that we're interested in and you notice here look from sort of March uh, into April we've seen a significant increase in the anomalies we're now up to a plus one so we're well within the moderate event category and it's really a case of what's going to happen next because that's the forecast from the CFS as to what happens. So on the one hand, I'm questioning the CFS for producing those areas of high pressure. But on the other hand, what it is doing and what it's doing quite well is that the CFS is managing to see the El Nino event kicking off. And it's predicting that the El Nino event really, really does take a kick from about now onwards. And it actually gets into quite a, a, a strong event come October running into November of this year. So the CFS is certainly seeing that as happening uh, and sees the, sees the El Nino event really kicking off. I, I still think the models are struggling with what this actually means in terms of weather. Um, and I think the only one, you know, that's really getting this right at the moment is the Chinese. This is the forecast for the next 30 days from the Chinese model. It's the 500 millibar height anomaly. It's got to twist your head around for this one. British Isles is underneath there. Look, you can see the Spanish Peninsula just sticking out there as well. And what that does for the next 30 days, look, it keeps low the normal heights towards the north, higher the normal heights down towards the south. It brings us quite a strong westerly flow across the country uh, and strengthens the jet. So what this hints at is it tries to keep for the next 30 days this dominant idea of a westerly flow, so a fairly unsettled pattern, rain across northern and western Scotland, at times some of it quite heavy, but dry conditions overall across southern parts of the country, but tending into the west or the northwest, and that would keep us in cooler than normal conditions. And the thing is that 
this model actually pretty well got the conditions that we're going through at the moment. So it pulls me back into the idea of looking at the Chinese model. This is the forecast through until the 9th of June and saying, well, actually, I'm, I'm tempted to go with it. I'm, I'm tempted to stick with the idea that the ideas that this model has taken us into uh, the early to middle parts of June. So uh, as I, I, I did say that there'd be lots of rambling, I did say that there'd be uh, a lot of uh, sort of looking at various different charts and going around about houses in this look ahead. Um, but I just wanted to show you what's going on at the moment. So the amount of confusion that there is in there. And I'm torn between going with almost entirely uh, that prediction that I showed you there for uh, the forecast for summer going into that westerly flow. I'm torn between that, which would certainly pull us away from the idea of high pressure in May, and uh, the forecast that I showed you from the CFS. So that forecast from the CFS, which goes against that flow from the analog models. This is going to be a very, very interesting test. Um, so what conclusions can we draw? Well, hopefully you see the, um, the, the confusion that's there in the long range forecast at the moment. And I'm hoping that there's some value in that for you, uh, in that this isn't just a rambling idea. It's a justification of, uh, of thoughts, really. Um, and it's there to try and give you some value in the forecast, even though we can't pin down what the forecast will be. Hopefully it gives you the value in the forecast to say, look, we've got to put hands in the air and say we're just not sure how this is going to go. I'm sure this pattern started off really last summer. So I think we were seeing the first signs of this really back when. So we were we were kind of in this period here was where we started to see this wobble in the long range forecast and, it, and, and the long range models. And it hasn't really come good uh, that well ever since. Although the forecast for winter was pretty well uh, spot on. Okay, uh, I'm going to leave you with that for now, but uh, hopefully that hasn't destroyed your confidence in forecasts too much. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget you can subscribe to us on YouTube by clicking on the subscribe button or send us an email uh, with your email address and we can add you onto our list, which means we notify you when these forecasts, these forecast videos are updated, which is every day. But for now, whatever you're doing, thanks again for watching. Thanks for listening to my diatribes uh, and uh, keep the sun shining and bye for now.